Thank you. All right. Um, I expect to have your designs graded within the next day or two, so keep your eyes open for that. Um, we're going to continue on with forms today. Probably wrap it up. We're going to talk a bit more about styling and about accessibility, relaying the forms. Um, and we're going to talk about um, some other form controls, including some ones, uh, some of them that are new to HTML5. And we're going to see a neat trick relating to how HTML5 form controls work that might be unexpected. Or might not be. I don't know. Let's start with what we had last time. And let's add some more form controls. All right. We were on this form example, and what we were doing is we were um, talking about the styling of it and talking about the additional form controls for it. So let's take a second to review this. For simplicity, I put the CSS in the same file as the HTML. Um, you know that you would not normally do that. Um, I'm just doing it just because it's easier to show stuff that way. All right, we have our basic form controls. We have a text box, which is simply input type equals text. We have a drop down, which is a select that consists of a bunch of options. The select has the name on it. The options have a value, and then they have um, the text that's between the start and end option tag. The text that's between the, the start and an option tag is what the user sees. The value is what the scripts see. And again, it's not, um, you know, when you're writing an application like this, you'll know what the script expects. For example, I believe we have a form assignment coming up, or we will soon, where I will tell you what the, what the script is going to expect. So then you just make sure the value matches what the script is going to be accepting, uh, expecting. All right. Finally, we have a submit button. A submit button, again, when it's clicked, it submits the form. And in this case, the form simply submits back to itself because there's no action. In other examples, we'll have an action there, and the action will be the name of the script that we are submitting to. For example, in this guy. this example, we had an action on the script, which was we called the script of the Bing search engine. 
In this case, I don't really have a script to go with it, so I omitted it, which means it's going to submit it back to itself. And that's often done in web pages where a form contains both the code to display the form and to process the results of the form. So the three form controls we've seen so far are the input type equals text, input type equals submit, and the select option pair. All right. One thing that we saw done for accessibility is labels created. And the labels hook a particular form control with the text that identifies what that form control is for. And again, that, that's good to do for people um, that um, are visually impaired and are using a screen reader to access this. But it also serves the purpose of identifying it for uh, people that can see as well. And we can add some styling to it. So how we styled this is we gave the form a width. We got rid of the bullet points. And we gave the label a certain width. And we text aligned right. So when we look at this, we see that all the labels are lined up on the right side. And all the text, or, or all the form controls are lined up um, left aligned, except for the submit form, which is centered within the form. All right, and we kind of did a Jello-like thing with this. We gave, uh, we did things based on percentages, but we did give a minimum width, so it won't get smaller than that. All right, which should be reasonable on a mobile device as well. Um, that's a good question. Um, the minimum would be um, minimum would be like 320 maybe. I've, I've seen some small phone phones like that. Um, again, ideally you'll you know you'll write it in a way that if you know that that you know you, you can't guarantee it's going to look optimal in, in all situations, but at least it'll be usable. Yeah, I guess it's sort of my my philosophy with that. And you can always use the Opera mobile to, to test it out and to see how it's going to look in those I things. Uh, yeah, I think you had mentioned that in lab. Uh, I'm not really sure um, why that is. Um, I know I, for example, my, my home laptop is an ancient MacBook. Uh, ancient, yeah, it's an ancient MacBook. And I had to download, I had to go back to a, an older version of it when I first installed it, you know, last year or whatever. So. Um, depending on your computer and operating system, you know, it could be. All right, let's look at some other form controls and let's round out sort of the basic form controls uh, first before we go into the special um, HTML5 ones. There could be a one of the things that we mention is that there can be checkboxes. And let's say we're going to put a list of interests on the page. Whereas someone could select any combination of these. In other words, unlike the drop down where if you pick one it eliminates the other choice, with a checkbox, there, there are a series of yes and no questions that operate independently. Notice I'm giving a name and an ID. The name is what the scripts are going to use. The ID is what the label is going to use. So I'm just going to make a series of these guys.
So I'll make three of them. They're sort of grouped together. And we'll do music, theater, and sports. Now, one thing I forgot to put on these that I'll go back and add in a minute. Yeah, thank you. It's all at a value for these. So I'm putting a value equals y. And what that means is if the checkbox is checked, its value will be whatever I specify here. In this case, it's y. It could be anything. It could be the word yes. It could be true. It could be anything like that. Now, let's go and save this and refresh. There's our three checkboxes. All right. And if I click music and sports, Notice that what gets passed on the query string is txt name, dd major, check music, and check sports. But check theater doesn't get sent on the query string because it doesn't have a value. It's kind of weird the way it's done, and, and it may, might seem a little inconsistent, but that's the way it is. So a text box always gets passed to the server. A dropdown always gets passed to the server. A check box only gets passed to the server if it is um, um, if it has if it's been checked all right and it has a value likewise a button only gets passed to the server if it's been clicked and it has a value all right now if we're looking at this form we could see that this form really you could sort of break down into several um, sections more or less in other words, this, this part of the form right here is sort of general information, I suppose. And this section over here is what the person is interested in. Both for accessibility and simply for styling reasons, you can break a form um, into sort of subforms. All right? They're not really subforms. It's, it's a bad choice. Um, but you can sort of break them into sections, and those sections are called field sets. Okay? So we can break them down into field sets, like this. And go in. Here. And I'm going to actually break this down into two lists and two field sets. And the field set tag looks like this. And then I can put the end field set tag down here. What that does is that draws little boxes around them. Okay, no, no big deal, right? But uh, that is good for accessibility, and I'll tell you why. 
We could, for example, um, if you think of, you know, if you're ordering something, there might be a billing address and a shipping address. Well, you might call both of those address, right? Address, address, or you might call it billing and shipping address. But the field set helps group them together, and it'll, again, it will help people that are using a screen reader keep sorted exactly what section of the form that you're in. You can also use, and I never remember what this is, so I always have to look it up. You can also put sort of a title on a field set. Legend. So I can do this legend, general information, and then I can put a legend on the second part of the page second part of the form, rather, that says interests. So there it puts up there as part of that. And of course, we can style these any way we want, right? We can, to, to sort of maybe make a, a division for these, you know, we can do with that the margin 0px auto. We can make the legend of the form be a different color, color blue. We can make our field sets have a background of gray. And maybe a top margin of 30 pixels. In other words, even if I don't explicitly in class go over the old standbys that we've been doing as far as CSS goes, you can put any of those things on any of the tags that we're using, all right, virtually. Repeat that, please. What was the field to, group, to group fields together, kind of almost like in subforms. So like in this example... Pardon me? The fields that put the box around it, yeah. And I could change that border if I want. That kind of looks ugly, all right, a little bit too dark a gray. So let's go in and make the gray a lighter shade of gray. I'm sign. There we go. That looks a little. Because it's on its own list. And it is, well, actually, let me back up, because I got rid of it from the list. I actually, when I created the field sets, I broke down the one list into several lists, and I forgot to take off, or I forgot to add a list here. Um, if you don't have the CSS, yeah, if you don't have a close tag, it's like all bets are off. It might work the way that you'd expect, it might not work. You can't really, can't necessarily easily predict. Um, I'm going to put a background color on the legend too to make it stand out a little bit more. Background white border. 1px 
black solid and font size 1.5 M. Alright, so yeah, looking maybe a little little closer to something presentable. I guess my bigger point is, is, is don't forget all the CSS that we learned before. Even if I haven't gone in and, and, and made uh, a, a form, uh, a label, uh, a different color, you can certainly do that. All right? You can actually do some neat tricks when you start getting into JavaScript, whereas, for example, if they uh, don't enter a field, you could change the label to a different color, a different font size, or, or something like that to draw their attention to it. All right. So, let's go and let's add some more miscellaneous things. And I'll create a new field set for those called miscellaneous. So we can, we can, shoot. I had a very tough weekend. So, I, if, I fe if I seem a little harebrained today, just trust me that I have a good excuse. All right, in this section, I'm going to put some of the other form controls. And one of the other ones is radio button. All right. Now, radio button, again, is different than a checkbox in that uh, radio buttons um, work as a group. Okay. That is, if you click one, it will turn off the other one. So maybe we'll do something like this. Like this is for a college, they might ask if you're in, for Loyan Community College, they might ask if you're in county, out of county, or out of state. So, radio buttons, it's type equals radio. This is going to be a case where the ID doesn't match the name. If you remember, in many cases, in most of the cases we've done so far, the name and the ID were the same thing. In this case, we need, the I, we need the name to group the three together. So we're going to give all three of these radio buttons the exact same name. All right? Because um, they work as a unit. When you check one, you're selecting the residency based on three options. So you can't have two options selected. So we need that name to tie them together. But they do still need their own ID, and they need their own ID for um, reasons of uh, uh, associating the label with it, or if we're doing any other sort of JavaScript with this. In fact, I'll make this residency. That'll be even better still. Oh, I forgot to put a value on here.
So I can go and add the other two. Okay, I think this is right. Notice they all three have the same name, but they have different IDs. They have different IDs so we can associate the label with the correct thing, except I forgot to put the label in, the actual text of the label. Now if we go and look at this, notice I can only select one of them. If I select out of state, it eliminates the other options. Now notice if I submit this, up on the query string, There we go. RB residency, that's the name of it, not the ID. And then equals in county. In county is the value that corresponds to the one that was checked. If I get the name wrong on one of them, if I spell it wrong, then it will no longer work like a proper radio button. So I could check that and that. And you shouldn't be able to do that. Right, because a radio button should work as a unit. As I check one, it should unselect the rest. So if, you, if you're able to select more than one radio button out of a group, you probably messed up on the name on one of them. So we can go and correct that. And we're back in business. All right, the last one, yeah, go ahead. Sure, sure. If you want to do, for example, if you want a residency to look a little different than the other two, then you could do an ID. Um, again, the, the thing about um, CSS is the rules work pretty much the same regardless of which tag you're talking about. You can style it based on an ID, you can style it based on a class, you can style it based on the HTML tag. But the only thing that's a little bit goofy is, uh, again, for example here, with the label, we wanted to put a width on it. Well, you can't put a width on an inline element, so we had to make the display inline block. So that was one little goofy thing that, that is true about that. But for the most part, anything that we style 
Anything that you, we do with CSS one way, we can do another way. Yeah, if we look here, I styled the label as inline block because otherwise the width wouldn't work. If I took that out, if I took the display inline block out, that width of 200 doesn't work because you can only assign a width to a block element. But if we say, all right, make it an inline block, it gets, it allows us to put block styling tags on an inline element. And then we're back in business. All right, the next thing that we can do is we can do a, uh, a, a multiple line text field, something like comments or, you know, um, additional information or whatever, something where it's not just a single line of, of text but a multiple line of text. We can use what's called a text area. And a text area allows us to put, again, multiple lines of text in the field. So let's go and create one. And a text area is not an input tag. It is a text area tag. So it's not input type equals text area. I don't know why they did it this way. I didn't do it. I'm just explaining. <laughs> and I can give it a name. I can give it an ID. I can create a label for it. And that's what we get. Oh, right, 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 right. I also messed up something that way. Yeah, for some reason, the text area does not like the empty tag. I also forgot the li. There we go. It's an open-ended comments field. So I can type in as many lines as I want. Now if I want a bigger field, I can actually do it a couple ways. I can do it via CSS or um, um, through the HTML. But I could say text area. Height. 
So that's actually a class. There is no submit tag. There's an input tag with the type submit. So I can't say treat that as an HTML tag. So there I have it bigger. Now the thing about a text box is even though we put in a size to it, you can overrun that size. How can you prevent it from being bigger than a certain amount? Like for example, Twitter. You can only type in 140 characters. All right, how do you keep it from being more than that? It has to be through JavaScript. All right, so text box allows you really to free form put in as much as you want with the HTML. Through JavaScript, we could validate uh, that. Okay, uh, there's a few other th uh, uh, tags um, that we can use. If we put a type equals password instead of type equals text, it won't echo it. Yes. Well, that is passed like anything else to the to the query string or whatever. So I can go that, and if you notice, on the query string is all that garbage that I was typing. So, pardon me. Well, remember, we're not writing the server side. We're not writing the server side script to save anything from this form. All right. So in order to process this, we'd need a server-side script on the other end that would take and do something with those comments. But we can do something with the comments just as well as we could do it with any of the other fields. All right. Okay. Uh, there, there's plain old buttons that you can use to trigger JavaScript. There's password controls. So input type equals button is just a plain old button that triggers JavaScript. There is input type equals password. That's a password field. In other words, it won't echo it. There's a, a input type equals either clear or reset. I don't know, and I'm not going to look it up because you should never use it. All right. A reset form wipes out everything in the form and, and clears it and allows you to start. And why do I say you should never use it? It, exactly. Let's go to let's go and search for classes for next spring if we can. Schedule of classes. All right. So let's say I'm going to be looking for spring of 2014. Classes. I like CISS classes. Course number. Oh, I don't know the course number. What's the additional search criteria? Well, I know I'm busy, you know. I want, who wants a class Friday, right? So I know I want either Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Instructor's last name. And I like this. You can search for an uh, instructor matching that, but you can't exclude instructors. So if you, if, if you hated me, you couldn't search for every class that I don't teach. You know, uh, you, you could only search for me. All right. And then there's a whole bunch of other stuff that you can search as well. Now look down here. There are two buttons. All right. One says clear, and one says search. Search, if I click it, it's going to go and do a search. But notice a couple things. Notice which the first one is. The first button there is clear. All right. Which is the bigger button? It's also clear. A lot of people are just, and a lot of people have told me this, just go in, and when they're done, whoops, click that, clear, and they've just wiped out all their search criteria and they have to go and enter it again. Search buttons rarely are beneficial. There's some very specialized cases, but I would, as a rule, avoid them. Because you're, you're throwing a potential obstacle. If, for example, I was searching
and I was entering in this all, all this criteria, and I decided, oh, wait a minute. That's right, I have a meeting on Mondays. I don't want to take a class on Mondays. Chances are you wouldn't want to clear your search criteria, as you mentioned, and re-enter it from scratch. You just go and change that one thing. All right. So very rarely are clear buttons or reset buttons. They're one of the two. I don't remember which because I never use them. Reset? Okay, <laughs> we shouldn't have said that. Now people may be tempted to use them. All right. I'm just kidding, just kidding. All right. Uh, we, we want to uh, avoid using them, all right, because what you want to do is you want to put more prominence on this. If you were going to use a reset button, I would put it off to the side and make it smaller, all right, so that the focus was I probably, most of the time after I've entered in my criteria, want to search. So I'll make that bigger. Remember, it's, it's, it's just like kids' drawings, right? The most important things in kids' drawings are always bigger, right? So therefore, um, you know, the most important things on your web page ought to be bigger. It's that visual language that communicates something without even a word. And you might say, well, what's wrong with a person? Don't they want to read the buttons? Well, yeah, that's no excuse, all right? Um, the whole idea of a well-designed web page is, is very intuitive. Uh, a good book on web design in the library is called Don't Make Me Think. In other words, don't make it tough for me to have to think, which button do I want to click again? Just make it obvious which one. Question or comment? Well, I was going to say, if I was going to use it, I would definitely want it to play because you might accidentally click it. Exactly. 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 So I might put, I might make a big old search button here and an itty bitty clear button here. All right, and, and that way, if you insist that that functionality is required, which I don't think it is in this case, but if, yeah, if, if, if you did have a compelling reason for that. And what I've heard is if you're doing like, if you're doing like repeated data entry, like on a content management system, you're running a whole bunch of things and each time you're only changing one thing about it or, or whatever. Uh, or each time you want to make sure you, you reset everything, whatever. Uh, there's an article uh, in Angel under resources that, that talks about this. All right, let's look at some of the other brand new HTML5 controls. Color, date email, month, and so on down the line. And I won't put them into my example. We'll just view them here. So select your favorite color. Input type equals color. All right, so instead of type equals text, type equals color. If I click that, notice what I get. I get a little thing that I can click on, and I can select the color that way. Yeah, typically every, um, ev by yeah, that by that tag, right. In other words, this is, this uh, dialog box that pops up is a Windows thing. In other words, this will be the color picker like if you're in Paint, too, or in, in a, a variety of different applications. So, so. No, 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 no trickery. It's just part of the Windows operating system. Just like, just like if you click Print for example, in a browser. You get the standard Windows print dialog. Same thing here. If you click the color, little color thing, you get the standard Windows color picker. Right. Yep. Here's a date control. When I click the drop down, instead of getting a drop down, I get something where I can pick a date that way. Email address. All 
and it tells me, without me having to write any JavaScript, please enter an email address. Now, I'm going to check. I don't know what version of IE we have here. I hope, for once, I hope we have an old version of IE. Because these are HTML5 tags, and as such, they may not work in every browser. Whatever version we have, this doesn't work in the browser. Um, because notice we didn't get that nice little error. All right? But look how it was put in. It was put in as a plain old text box. So let's go back to the color picker. If I view this in Internet Explorer, Notice I don't get the neat little color picker because Internet Explorer doesn't support that. But what do I get? I get a standard input typed equals text box. Or if I do a, probably the, the, probably the best one to see is date. In Internet Explorer, if I type in, if I use a date, all right. Notice that I don't have the drop down for the date picker like I do in Chrome. But I can still enter in the birthday, right? I can still enter in or whatever and click submit. All right. Now I might have to write some JavaScript validation for that or some server side validation. So I'm not off the hook with that. But the nice thing is, is again, this is what is called degrading gracefully. In other words, if a feature isn't supported, the way HTML is written is, if it doesn't figure out what type of input it is, if, it does, if the browser doesn't know, it makes it a text box. So the, all these newfangled things that come in in HTML5, older browsers will treat them just like text boxes. And really, that's not bad. That's about, uh, you know, at least it doesn't blow up completely. Yes? Is the latest version of... Well, again, keep in mind when you say support HTML5, is not a yes or no question. It is incremental. So it, the latest version probably supports more than this version, but, you know, I'm sure there's probably some things that you could find that it doesn't support. And that's probably true for all browsers. I mean, I, uh, Internet Explorer tends to fall a little behind the curve as far as HTML5 goes, but it's not as though Chrome or Firefox or, or Opera or Safari are perfect as far as that goes either. So, um, all right. Okay. All right. Questions? Okay. Um, we'll see you up in lab then. <laughs>